Hopkinton, and welcome to the Hopkinton Hangout Hour. I'm your host for this hour, Jim Cousins, and we are live coming from HCAM, and we appreciate you taking the time to uh, stop by and see what we're talking about. Today, we are talking about Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, is This is the actual day, and we are very excited to have some people who have been involved. Um, with the uh, celebrations here in Hopkinton. Now, traditionally, as we know, this has been a big deal in town and COVID-19 has kind of blown in this last year and all kinds of different things are happening. So we're gonna talk with some people who have been involved and we're going to see what they're doing today. So I'd like to welcome everybody. And if you could please just first introduce yourselves in case somebody doesn't know you. Start with Dawn. Hi everyone, I'm Kathleen Dinsmore and I am the founder of the Hopkinton Freedom Team and the facilitator. Hi everyone, my name is Chris Ocampo. I am uh, one of the assistant principals at Hopkinton Middle School. I'm Alindra Canty and I am on the Youth Commission as well as the Freedom Team. Okay, so welcome to you all. And I know we may be expecting another member or two uh, as well. And as they come in, Bob will usher them onto our show. So thank you all for being here. And can we talk for a little bit about what has happened in the past concerning Martin Luther King Day, some of the activities that have happened and stuff that has gone on, and then we'll transition right into what this year looks like. So who has some history? So I can, I can give some history. So MLK Day generally looks like a much larger in-person community event. Um, it's grown over the past couple of years as we've tried to build community engagement um, as well as age ranges uh, um, in, for participation. So it usually will start with a speaker that will come in and service projects as well going on throughout the day as well as we bring in our um, National Honor Society students and any other youth in town that wanna to volunteer to do some um, MLK Day related crafts and activities with the kids. Um, we end with a basketball game. Um, so it's sort of an all day event that generally starts, we shift it a little bit year to year, but around eight in the morning and is wrapping up around two um, in the afternoon. Great, okay. And let's welcome in our um, additional members who've just joined us. If you just briefly just introduce yourselves, Cheryl. Yes, hello, I'm Cheryl Peralt and I am a member of the Hopkinton Freedom Team. Great, and Stacia. Hi, I'm Stacia Frederick Cozy. I'm a member of the Hopkinton Youth Commission. Okay. All right. So it is Martha Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. Day today. Um, what does this day mean to, to you, to you all? It is obviously a commemoration of Martin Luther King, but I think it goes beyond that. We for years as a community have celebrated as a day of service. Um, about what, four years ago, five years ago, we really tried to bring in the spirit of Martin Luther King Day as well. And the fact that this re represents more than just a day of service, but also a day of um, commemoration of some very important civil rights movements. And, that some, and that's something we try and keep in mind as part of our curriculum that we release for the day as part of the Youth Commission. Um, but for me, um, especially this year, Martin Luther King Day really just seems to be one of the more important days in which we recognize not only those who've been oppressed or marginalized, but our efforts to try and uh, bring forward those people who need to be heard in those areas. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, is your microphone working, do we think? You know, I think so. Yep. We can hear you now. So Great. first, introduce okay. yourself. Yep. I'm Sarah Schneider Watson. I'm the Hopkinton Freedom Team, also clergy here on Hopkinton at the Vineyard Church. Um, and Stacia, I loved what you said um, about MLK Day, especially this year. Um, I think for, for me, uh, for the Hopkinton Freedom Team and us in our, our community, it really does have a special poignancy uh, this year as we consider um, the Black Lives Matter movement, so many important um, things happening in our country. Um, but I think it's also a day for us to really take stock and move forwards. Um, I think it's a day for uh, truth telling and encouragement um, and just really 
you know, appreciating Martin Luther King Jr.'s work and also thinking what would Dr. King want to be moving forward and what's the invitation to us, you know, personally, individually, and also a, a as a community. So very meaningful day this year, especially. Thank you, Sarah. And who's gonna be next? Tell us what it means, what MLK Day means to them personally. Well, uh, briefly, I can say, uh, I can think of Dr. King as a world leader who uh, speaks still from his dream of a different world um, that is possible um, for all of us to move forward uh, as one family together in equality and equity and that it was a great deal of work and sacrifice that Dr. King made for the wheels to get in motion, uh, which most of us will probably not uh, experience. Um, yet uh, there is work to do uh, from what he got started and he made so much ground for us. But as we see from this year, from our history, uh, there's so much more work to do and he invites us, you know, I have a dream, okay? And now how do we add on and keep this dream moving forward is his invitation in this year. Very nice, thank you, Cheryl. Um, just briefly, I think that Martin Luther King Jr. Day for me is a, a time at least once a year where a good part of the community actually comes together and remembers Dr. King and trying to bend the arc more towards justice. Um, and so uh, this day in particular is, is bringing people together to do um, some sort of community service or to learn more personally or to reach out somehow. But it's also a, a huge reminder. And I know that this is what um, past MLK events have said um, in Hopkinton is that use this as a stepping stone and don't just make it one day of community service. You still have 364 more days in the year to constantly be moving forward. So I think that um, this annual event is a good reminder um, that we have to do this all the time if we wanna make any progress. Thank you. So I certainly echo the sentiments of everyone who's spoken thus far. And I love what you just said, Kathleen, um, because for me personally, it is a reminder of the work that has been done and how much more work needs to be done. And it is, today is a reminder of that to commemorate Dr. King's legacy and to work on those other 364 days and figure out what more can be done, how we can keep pushing forward and helping to achieve justice and peace for all those who aren't receiving those things. Okay, we got Chris and Don left. You guys want to say a few words? Sure. Um, I think for me personally, I think it's it's really a time of reflection um, and how far we've we've come as a country uh, and as I guess a race and moving forward, how how much more work we have to continue doing. Um, one of my favorite quotes that is is by Dr. King, and he says, "Our lives begin the." to the day we become silent about things that matter. And I can't help but think of uh, 2020 and really all of the things that have happened that relate to all the work that he's done and, um, and just really reflect on how much work we still have to continue doing. Um, and being silent is, is not the answer and having these conversations to be able to move forward is something that I, I want to continue doing. And I think uh, Dr. King, King has really told us we can't stay silent about some of these difficult things that we have to continue working on. Yeah. All right, Don, did you speak? I want to make sure I, I don't miss, give you an opportunity. I did, so I just really echo what everyone says and yeah. we hope to keep 
you know, inspiring community to keep educating, reaching out, pushing ourselves further on all those other days. And, you know, that's was what we're hoping to do by kind of uniting Hopkinton, right? We're all working in towards so many of the same goals. And as more of us work together, we are um, more readily available for the community for a safe space to ask questions or be supported. And I think that's really our goal moving forward for every other day after this. I think that's really important. I have, um, I've always admired Martin Luther King. I think that his, his thoughts and his words are just very profound and, and also are just like so, so well crafted. You know, like I have a dream. It's so, everybody can understand that and everybody can jump onto that. And I, I do feel that this year is markedly different, obviously, than any other year. And it has been very, very, um, amazing the level of conflict that is happening uh and i hear you know a lot of uh you know we need to have a conversation or we need to have a difficult conversation and i really hope that we can get past saying that we have to have a conversation and really get to having a conversation because the world that martin luther king described with his words is the world that we should all be living in there's nothing special or magical about it it is just just and right and equitable and i think that i just am very hopeful that with everything that this country is struggling through right now can be an impetus to really make some uh forward progress and some forward change on that so i applaud all of you for um stepping up and taking part and uh could let's let's talk about what's actually happened or happening today and how you are uh, celebrating this day this year okay um, Stacia. <laughs> sorry there's a silence i'll jump into it um so just to quickly reiterate so from as donna noted with hopkinton unites we put together kind of an agenda that really kind of showed what the community was doing as a whole. This year is different. We can't do things like we have in the past. We've really kind of focused in the past of really doing in-person activities, things that were interactive. And um, this year was a bit different. We couldn't be in person. We couldn't see each other in person. So um, each um, uh, group in the community really seems to step forward with other efforts to really kind of commemorate the day bring the day forward and bring us into a different kind of uh, uh, mindset around how we do this. Um, yesterday, and you can talk more about it from the Freedom Team, um, they presented a speaker um, in collaboration with the Mazamine Center. And I think that that speaker was very profound in his, his, his message. And it's something you guys can speak more about. This morning, we put together an interactive um, activity for children because a lot of the day centers around what we do with kids and so we spent some time with kids in an interactive live activity that both read a book around um, um, some, uh, so, uh, an artist who's very active in the civil rights movement and how we can how kids can continue to create that art. Um, today we're here on this call but also we have a number of additional kind of activities that are online and pre-recorded for um, people to take in short bursts. So there's six, seven minute videos. Um, the um, South Asian Circle of Hopkinton put out an excellent video, video by a middle schooler, which includes interviews with, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Gandhi, um, uh, uh, obviously Martin Luther King, and what was the other one? I forget Nelson, who the other one Nelson was. Mandela. And Nelson Mandela. I mean, once again, it's 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 about seven minutes, but it's worth every minute to watch it. And really, it's been it was really eye opening and a wonderful thing to see. Um, another student at the Hopkinton High School, who was part of the National Honor Society, put together um, a very short video. It's maybe five minutes of one of Nels of one of um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s most famous speeches. Um, but it's 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 really great for you know, people to be able to sit down and just watch it, even if it's just five minutes out of their day and think about what the day means. And then last but not least is um, something that we posted to our Hopkinton Unites 
um, agenda on our Facebook page, and that would include the uh, information around um, the letter from Martin Luther King in Birmingham jail. And um, if you have not taken the moment to read the letter, it is definitely probably one of the most moving ones that I'd ever read. Lynn brought it to me this year. I had not read it before. Um, I'm fairly active in diversity, inclusion, and equity within my own life outside of Hopkinton. I was very surprised I'd never seen it before, and it was definitely something that moved me to the core. So I think it's something for, that's an opportunity for everybody to take advantage of. And so I just want to jump in there for a minute. The um, video by the uh, South Asian Circle of Hopkinton, uh, we're actually going to be talking about that with one of the people who created it in our second segment of the show. So we're going to play that uh, as part of the show. And I'd also uh, like to maybe take a minute, you know, there are a few things that have been thrown out here in this um, short time already. The Freedom Team, Hopkinton Unites, uh, how many um, organizations do we have community groups in our community dedicating themselves to diversity and inclusion and social justice? Can, are, are they the two or are there more? And who can tell us a little briefly a little bit about them? So Hopkinton Unites, as far as I'm aware right now, was <clears throat> not necessarily an organization. It was, it was created by, I think, a, a brainstorm of Lynn that popped up with that name as the Youth Commission was challenged with um, what is MLK Day going to look like this year? Because we clearly knew early on it was going to look different, right? It wasn't going to be a large in-person event. So we had originally planned as a Youth Commission to have a scavenger hunt throughout town um, today and we had been in the planning process of that and creating a couple maybe um, tutorials and whatnot and package crafts for kids and as of like eight days ago it was okay let's shift and start new because numbers were saying you're not going to do that right so it was you know all right how do we kind of pull all this together and because as you mentioned there are so many organizations where our missions cross very often um, and doing very similar things. So how do we get something in one place for our community to see, be able to value, take advantage of, um, and help pass on that education? And it was Lynn that came up with the name of Hopkinton Unites and we were like, it was perfect for the message that we were trying to send. So as the Youth Commission, you know, we're constantly moving education and supports through for youth in town. That, that's kind of our mission. Um, and then I will let the Freedom Team explain a little bit of what their mission is. Great. And before, before that, I actually would like to just follow up with Lynn, um, the creator of the Hockington Unites label. Is this geared specific aimed at um, MLK Day or is it a, um, a, a wider concept? So to me, it's a wider concept. Um, in the, well, I've been a part of Youth Commission for this is my third year. Um, I have been a member of Freedom Team since I, I guess September or so. Um, and with 2020 being as tumultuous and distressing with all the different events throughout the country, online, there's all these Facebook groups that have popped up. We have Freedom Team and all these efforts. Youth Commission have, our goal has really been how can we support our youth with all that's going on between the pandemic and the racial unrest. Um, when it came time to plan for MLK Day, I just thought, wouldn't it be nice to bring as many of these efforts that are trying to do the same thing together? So even though we may at times have a slightly different focus, the overall concept and the overall goal is the same. Peace, unity, support of the community, we're all trying to do the same thing at the end of the day. How can we support the families, the children? What can we do to make our little Hopkinton a better place to live? So if we can combine as many of our efforts as possible, how much stronger as a community will we be? 
Okay, so what is Hopkinton Unites? Is it a, a collaboration of several um, co uh, community organizations in town? Yes, it's, it's a way to pool resources. So okay. if we are looking at doing something with mental health, so Youth Commission is directly connected to Youth and Family Services. Youth and Family Services is also connected with Freedom Team. We're also connected with the mental health collaborative in town. There's all these different entities. When our missions align, it's nice to just pull them together. And so if we're all looking at how to support mental health, it's it's just one, we can come together and, and support that for Hopkinton together. Great, thank you for that. Okay. May Who I wants answer? To give us so, uh, Go ahead, Cheryl. Oh, um, and, and tagging on um, that uh, being on the freedom team this year, uh, I was thinking how in Hopkinton, we are at the start of the Hopkinton Marathon uh, for the, the country, for the world. We have, we invite the whole world here for one day. We are all here united for one day, all over from different places, different people. And so we are leaders in a sense of showing people how to unite and be a united people. For one day, uh, we are the example and it makes sense um, uh, to embody this uh, for the pride and the love of our town uh, that we uh, focus on what it means to unite as part of who we are as a town of Hopkinton, and hopefully that it permeates beyond and is contagious. Perfect, thank you. All right, who wants to give a, uh, the elevator pitch for what the Freedom Team is? In case well, somebody hasn't heard. Um, I'm happy to, but I wanna tag on also some other organizations. You asked which, what other organizations are in town with this similar mission. And the Freedom Team has also um, been collaborating with the South Asian Circle of Hopkinton quite a bit. We have a couple of their members on our team and the Islamic um, Masumin Center in Hopkinton. And uh, they were the ones who had a wonderful event yesterday for MLK Day. First time it's ever been virtual. Um, and they, they hosted the speaker that, um, that Cheryl new um, and he was very moving and in fact the whole program was was fabulous I thought I learned a lot um, I was impressed by the number of people who were there they had a lot of different activities going on at that event and so um, I never knew that this was a two-day event in Hopkinton until this year and so it's going to be a tradition for me. And I think that um, the Youth Commission then has put out this flyer with all the links to all of the different activities going on um, in town. And I know that there are other groups in, in Hopkinton too. I apologize for not remembering them right now, but, but those two stick out because they are also asso associated with the Freedom Team right now. Jim, okay. I could talk a little bit about what the district has been doing, the school district. So um, the, um, you know, ob obviously 2020 has been pretty crazy. Uh, we've seen a lot of events coming up and a lot of dialogue has been um, stirring because of that. Um, as, as a result, um, teachers, uh, administrators felt uh, the need to create, um, we call it the DEI team, the diversity, equity, inclusivity team. Uh, and that team consists of a number of teachers, um, myself, um, and two, uh, two other administrators. Um, and they're all representatives from the high school and the middle school. And the idea behind the team is to really look at various parts of the, the district um, where we could really reach out to certain um, groups of people um, who may feel marginalized, assessing our curriculum to, to ensure that uh, we do abide by the, the DEI practices, um, as well as uh, looking at how we can reach out to community members um, and, and groups um, 
around us. Um, I kind kind of like what everyone here has been saying is I think that um, the more the more united we are, the the stronger we are. And you know, this the school system is such it's such a big system where much of our efforts can really really be um, worked on. And so um, the DEI team, uh, so I wanna make sure I give a shout out to them because they've been working hard within their, within, uh, their meetings. Um, as they've, they've really gone above and beyond to really start this conversation. So um, I hope that because of what's been going on and throughout, through these meetings, we can continue the collaboration efforts within our community. Um, and so the DEI team is, is really looking forward to that. Perfect, thank you, Chris. I'm also, sorry, I, I left you out, Chris. Chris is our newest <laughs> member, <laughs> or one of our newest members. And um, yes, I, I'm very excited about the collaboration that's possible. Great. Thank you. And now, if you don't mind, I'd like to uh, invite Sarah, if she could talk um, from her perspective, from her perch in our community. Now, MLK Day, I think, is kind of like a fulcrum or a focal point. Um, through a lens through which we can look at things that are happening in our world uh, regarding justice and um, equity. And I was just wondering if you could talk for you know a minute or two about what you have been seeing happening, not just like you know nationally in the news, but in our community and um, thoughts and feelings that have been happening like that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just so interesting. We think of Martin Luther King Jr. as you know, lived like a long time ago, but he's a contemporary with Barbara Walters and um, a lot of his work, you know, just wasn't that long ago, all things considered. I think so much of his work, it does actually feel very contemporary and pertinent and relevant, right? He got so much um, criticism for wanting to, to push and people said, oh, you know, just be, just be content with slow change. And so much of his work was on economic equality. Um, so I think, you know, Martin Luther King Day, you know, we can memorialize with cute little quotes and, um, but so much of it really does hit close to home and is incredibly pertinent and relevant to things that we're still dealing with today. Um, it's great to see how much progress we've made, but also we see how much progress we haven't made. And um, when we really look at what he was all about, especially towards the end of, of his work, Dr. King really did a lot of work around economic equality and his final, uh, the sanitation uh, workers um, working with their uh, situation economically. So I think any of these opportunities are just really good opportunities, um, like Chris, you were saying, for reflection. Um, and I think as we, you know, reflect on his work and just also on our communities, it's an invitation. Um, you know, in our faith community, we've, um, we did a, a book study on uh, diversity and racism on the U.S. and it's it's really looking personally, um, examining our own areas of, of ignorance and saying, you know, how do I, how am I contributing to, to white supremacy and to, you know, typifying white things as normative or, you know, how, how are we part of that? Um, but it really is, especially in Dr. King's work, all just a labor of love. It's a, there's no condemnation. It's an invitation forward. I think as we do that as a community, especially, that's even more of an invitation forward than love because you're looking at the folks whose, whose lives you want to make better, whose kids' lives you want to make better. Um, so it's just a real invitation um, to truth telling um, and then to, to moving forwards in, in love, um, which you know we're trying to do in our, our faith community, which is what I love about the Hopkinton Freedom Team, uh, the values of love, inclusion, and trust. Um, that is really just what, what we want to be moving towards. So, mm-hmm. Very good. Very good. Thank you. And, you know, I, like talking all about this, um, personally, you, you hear the word love a lot. And um, from my perspective, I really do think that to uh, quote an old song, that love is the answer, um, that love is the way. And I know that for myself personally, I used to think that having a quote, uncomfortable conversation was something that was more um, antagonistic. Although recently I've 
been really hearing how the, they are defining, you know, they mean the people having these conversations are defining the issues um, very succinctly. And I have found that the uncomfortableness comes from the fact that quite honestly, like that, I would not have expected um, America to, to be that way. I know that America has a very racist past, but you know, I was one of those naive people who thought that, you know, things are getting better, things are getting better. But when I hear um, from my friends and my family members uh, stories, it's uncomfortable to hear what, you know, like the youth of America um, can be going through. And I think that's really important. And it makes me think when Stacia was talking about how she hadn't read the uh, letters from Birmingham, um, that, you know, perhaps NPR every year they do, they read uh, a Christmas carol, you know, and they have like their anchors like take parts and they read the whole story somewhere near uh, Christmas Eve, you know, and all of you on this, on this show are really focused on, um, these important issues and perhaps we could do some type of thing where on a regular basis you know we have some of you reading some of these you know important uh, letters and passages and thoughts uh, in our life as a way to begin a conversation and to bring awareness to the kind of world that we would like to build in this country for ourselves and our and our kids I agree. Um, I just want to make a note. I mean, in in to tag on to what Sarah was saying and then you were saying, Jim, I mean, matters is the minimum. The idea here is that it goes beyond bringing people up, to, you know, be, beyond bringing it up to a point where mat lives matter, but to a point where lives mean as much as everyone else. Matters is definitely the minimum. And we need to shoot for something that will allow us all to continue to think about what we can do to improve this quality of life for everyone in these years forward. I love the idea of everybody getting together and reading something like that. When I was saying to Lynn just a couple nights ago, if we had thought of it sooner, I probably would have asked our high school volunteers to all take a paragraph and read it and then splice that together. But unfortunately I hadn't thought of it before then, but I love the idea of that. Yeah. And that's it. So you said it right in there, right? To make our world better for all of us, you know, because we only get one life. We only get one time around in this world. And we should try to make it the best we can for um, all of us. I'm a big Star Trek fan, you know, and I'd love to see, you know, the world of Star Trek be able to be brought closer to reality because there are a lot of really wonderful concepts in there. Well, guys, you've all done really well. Um, I'm really happy. Um, that you've, you've all spoke and uh, this is really important stuff going on. We've got about five minutes left. And uh, before I get to any of my other questions, I just wanted to make sure that if somebody wanted to talk about something that's happening or um, something that, you know, leading up to the events of the day, um, Shelly might want to talk a little bit about uh, that speaker, Hippolyte, and maybe if you know, or somebody knows where people can connect with that video uh, if they want to follow up with it. And also, you know, it's not like a New Year's resolution, but this is uh, a focal point to gather our attention. What are we um, going to be carrying forward after MLK Day in 2021? A lot of stuff out there. So feel free to take anything. So I just <clears throat> want to say, you know, Without saying, we all know all the challenges that 2020 has brought all of us and our youth, our families, our community um, throughout this past year. And as a youth commission, thinking about how our MLK Day was going to look in a world that certainly looked nothing like it did a year ago. And then even as soon as eight days ago, oh my goodness, how are we not going to let down the community and how are we going to bring this day what it deserves in, in eight days, completely flipping what we had planned. Um, so following under the Hopkinton Unites, looking in the positive is that Hopkinton Unites speaks volumes just in itself. And I'm looking forward to in this coming year, 
really continuing that, right? It, like we said, all of these organizations and people doing all of this wonderful work. And I think during all of this, it kind of caused mm -hmm. us to take a pause for a second and go, okay, how, how do we kind of unite everyone? Let's do it. And so many people, so many organizations, so many community members stepped up in eight days and, and pulled together something that, you know, brings us together on MLK Day um, in a way that we just could not have thought was possible eight days ago. So thank you to the community. Thank you to every one of those organizations. Thank you to my amazing Youth Commission team that I constantly say, I, I don't know what I would do without each and every one of them. Um, so yeah, that's just thank you everybody as, as, as Hopkinton is, proves to be Hopkinton. Great, thank you. All right, anybody else with some final thoughts? I would like to second all of that. And I think that um, one important aspect of the Freedom Team is collaboration. And um, just, I am just so touched and truly moved by the number of people. Um, some of you are here who have said yes to my invitation to join the Freedom Team and about 20 others um, who, who form the core group. And the amount of energy and sharing and vulnerability and um, just action that has taken place since it was formed over the summer is really um, remarkable to me. And, and I think that we just have a good momentum moving forward um, I think that you're going to see a lot more collaboration with whichever group in the community would like to partner with us um, to bring these difficult conversations to the community to try to make change um, to the institutions, to us personally, and um, just to have more of that lit, that love, inclusion, and trust and so we're going to be working as a community, as groups, but um, also the Freedom Team does have its hotline that people can find on our website, hopkintonfreedomteam.org. Um, and it is a confidential number. It does go through to the chief of police, um, but the only reason that he looks at it uh, is to make sure that a hate crime is not involved where it is a crime and has to be dealt with by the police or requires immediate assistance to the person who was harmed. Other than that, um, it, he will refer it to the Freedom Team, um, to me at this point, and then I will figure out two or three people on the team who can um, talk in a safe and confidential and really a warm and loving environment just to give witness to the person um, who wants to tell what happened and to move forward from there if, if they want. So um, I just want to remind the community about that. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Cheryl, you got one minute, go. Uh, um <laughs> Um, you know, I have the words children and love here to remember. My background's child psychologist. I met Hippolyte over a year ago uh, as a peace builder who's an artist from Rwanda who came over because people were hearing about his work and they wanted him to represent the great work he's doing as a peace builder, not only as an artist, but as an activist in Rwanda and beyond in the world. And I asked him, how can you revisit the trauma and keep telling your story of the horrible hard times you've been through in your life and how you've moved forward to help bring reconciliation and peace to uh, two groups uh, that were involved in genocide uh, and bring it over here and, and, uh, and also face the words that these people have in, in coming together, perpetrators and victims. And 
he said to me that he decided to take this work as a peace builder and, and share his story painful as it is, it's unimaginable. And he said it's because of the children and he thinks about the future generations and that he doesn't want the future or the present of children to be dealing with what he faced as a child survivor of genocide. And I think that's so important from around the world to be heard uh, wherever we are, that uh, we are here also in our work for our children right here and for our future generations to come as well. We need to hold that close in all our work always. And Dr. King also spoke of that at great length. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Um, everyone, thank you so much. You know, you have an open invitation at any time to come on and talk. And I hope that um, we can have a more regular interaction between your organizations and our organization. We exist only to connect our community with, um, you know, uh, entertainment, information, and education that they can use. And, and what you are all doing is among the most important. So thank you all for being here and I hope to see you soon. Okay. All right, now we are moving on to our second segment, which uh, I'm very grateful for. I just found out about this video and saw it and it was really cool. So um, let's see, uh, uh, Sushma, tell us about how this video uh, came into existence. Sure. Um, we uh, we were just discussing as a, as a board, and um, we're trying to uh, prepare something for this year's uh, celebration for Dr. King's birthday. You know, because it I couldn't have come in at a, a more significant time uh, this year. Um, it really serves to remind us all of the work that is still needed. The work that he set out to do is, um, you know, how much more is need, how much more of that is still needed. Um, and all those questions that were asked, you know, about 65 years ago how they're still relevant and uh, how we all need to reflect on them and recommit to the principles of justice and equality that he sacrificed his life for. Um, and those questions are um, in the minds of our young people uh, going to school. Um, and they all, especially this year, uh, stuck at home, uh, really know where to look for answers, um, uh, know, know where to really even talk about them. Um, so we just felt like we can take them back in history, um, you know, to times where uh, people had similar questions and talk to the people who were, you know, trailblazers of nonviolence, equality and peace. Um, and that's how we came about this kit. That's, and, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say Arun, uh, you know, uh, who's our wonderful uh, middle schooler who participated in it, uh, was, was had the exact same questions that we were looking to answer. So it really fit in well. Wow, that's really cool. Did he, did he do this as anything for um, what he's doing at the middle school or is this for the um, South Asian Circle website and the MLK yeah. Day experience? No, it was uh, basically for South Asian Circle of Hopkinton. Uh, we did, we did after making the video, we just felt like it was relevant and we sent it to the schools and stuff like that, but um, it was more as a part of um, South Asian Circle of Hopkinton. Right, that's awesome. So um, I recommend anybody to visit their website, SouthAsianCircleOfHopkinton.org, uh, and you will see the video on there. But if you don't mind, we'd also like to just play it right now. Absolutely. All right. So Mike, take it away, and then we'll we'll talk on the other side. As we remember and celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy on this day, in an environment where we've reached a crescendo of outcries and protests for social justice and in a sensitive political climate where tensions and emotions are running high, many fellow citizens are left grappling with how to deal with these issues and pondering the impact that this might be having on our young ones. We at such figured, what if we reached back into history and pulled out the wisdom of three men, Dr. King, Gandhiji and Nelson Mandela to help and guide us. In this short skit titled, Arin zoomed in with MLK, Gandhi, and Mandela. We'll have Arin, a middle schooler from Hopkinton Public School, who will pose some questions and such members voicing these three leaders and using some of their famous quotes to help and guide young Arin. Hello, Dr. King, Mr. Mandela, and Gandhiji. It is nice to be here and thank you for your presence. My first question to you is this. 
We had a discussion recently in civics class about the events that took place at the Capitol building two weeks ago. My friends and I were affected emotionally by our discussion. What steps should we take to heal our country going forward? It's okay for you to feel this way. And in fact, a lot of adults feel this way too. The actions of a few hundred or even a few thousand should not drown, drown out the larger good that's happening in our world. Even on that day, there were many brave people and leaders that carry on with their duty and did what was right for democracy. Remember, if for every such action by a few, if people on the other side engaged in similar behavior, then as I've famously said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. I'm curious to hear what my dear friend, Dr. King has to say. You know, this is the unusual thing about nonviolence. Nobody's defeated. Everybody shares in the victory. And I feel at the center of nonviolence stands the principle of love. You should look to follow the path of love. I understand where you both are coming from, but I still have some questions. We all want peace in the world, and we all talk about how we should live in harmony with our fellow people. But given all that is happening, we feel like we can't talk to others anymore. So what can we as kids do to help others out? Sure, when you hear big words like world peace, it's completely understandable that this is something we all want, but yet one can't see how we contribute or what our role in it is. I strongly believe it all starts with you and how you treat others. Peace between countries must rest on the solid foundation of love between individuals. You must be the change you want to see in the world. Mr. Mandela, can you share your thoughts based on your experiences in bringing an end to apartheid in South Africa? You're right, Mr. Gandhi. What counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others that will de determine the significance of the life we lead. Sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great. You can be that generation. It's good to have these kind of directions from leaders like you. However, I still feel like there's more to be addressed. Tension has been building up in our country and all around the world over the last few months and years due to recent events involving injustice. People feel a strong sense of inequality and injustice, and they can't see a path forward behind their rage and sorrow. Can you help us see through the darkness? Well, I can tell you about how I approached it and ask this of everyone I preach to. Make a career of humanity. Commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights. You will make a greater person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. Mr. Mandela, hmm. what has been your experience? Well, I believe that a nation should not be judged by how it treats its highest citizens, but its lowest ones. People should understand that no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin, or his background, or his religion. If they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love, for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. You do remember that I once said many years ago on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial that I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I hope that dream comes true. And if America is to be a great nation, this must come true. Thank you once more for your collective guidance, wisdom, and for joining me in this call to talk on these matters. The knowledge I have now, I can find a way to help my friends and my community. Good, Good luck. luck. That was awesome. That was really good. Thank you. It still gives me goosebumps when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> now, who put that together? Like, who found the, you know, all the information and crafted the questions and the answers? Um, it was actually uh, 
teamwork. You know, I think when the, one of the one of the people where we sent this to uh, said we must have put in a lot of effort into it. Um, I wouldn't say it was a lot of effort. It was just that you know we got this idea that let's do this kit, um, and all of us were really excited because it just seemed like a very relevant way to get the message across. Um, and then there was a sense of urgency, so it just kind of came together very organically. Um, the three themes we just kind of came across with put together the three themes that the uh, that these three uh, great men stood for um, and kind of framed questions around that and uh, found answers in the quotes that that were online um, and that were quoted by them. Um, so it just kind of came together very organically. It was good teamwork, came together in two days and uh, we're very proud of it. <laughs> yeah, you should be. I really, really think it was a genius to think about the backgrounds that you had um, yes. and showing who the people were. That was great. It really helped you to connect with that. Yes. That was, uh, that was again, teamwork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you picked three great people. You know, they, their, their words are not only are inspiring, but are just, they're, they're like a delight to listen to, you know, they're universal truths that, when you hear them, it just it just rings true. Exactly, and uh, you know, all three from different generations. Um, but you you can just see like how the world goes through a cycle of um, you know uh, a cycle of needing these men, and um, I think we're long due for one of them, and hopefully the next generation um, is that great man, not just one person, but you know the next generation becomes those great men. Yes, yeah, great men and women. Women, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just have a couple minutes left and I'd like to just get you to talk for a minute about the South Asian Circle of Hockington because you folks do awesome things. Thank so you. tell me a little bit about what, what you're doing. Um, we are uh, basically a, a, a community organization, a nonprofit organization based here in Hopkinton. Uh, we, uh, we are here to uh, basically uh, put together cultural events and uh, programs that um, that that people can enjoy, the the community can enjoy and learn from uh, about the culture of uh, South Asian countries, um, and also uh, collaborate with other organizations in town um, and bring our word across and bring their word across to the community, the South Asian community in Hopkinton. So that's what we're here for. Uh, we have a website, a uh, wonderful website put together by. Uh, our board member Smith up. Please visit it, and you'll learn more about it. Um, and uh, we hope to we have to hope to collaborate more with people in town and the communities in town. Great, you've already had some <laughs> really cool activities. So, what are some of the recent things that you've done? Uh, recently, we put up the uh, the Hopkinton lights up as one um, in our uh, town common. Um, you know, we lit up the sign for thirty days um, every week, representing. Uh, actually, we came across. We put together uh, the the whole sign as um, you know. Uh, I, I don't know the exact word for it, but each week we represented one uh, letter of the. Uh, of Hopkinton, um, like, such as hope, for example, for H, um, and we lit it up for that, and we spread the message of uh, messages of hope, um, which our community has contributed to, um, and uh, highlighted those. So uh, we, we did that throughout the month of uh, November, and I think it went all the way through the month of this middle of December. Mm. So that was one of the projects that we uh, that we did. And uh, more recently, I think in uh, summer or spring and summer of uh, last year, we did the uh, the whole fund fundraising Fridays project to raise funds for Project Just Because. Um, again, we had four weeks of uh, fun Fridays where we uh, tried to get people together on Zoom calls and participate in various events that we uh, we had on the Zoom calls. So that was. Uh, a great way of having fun and doing good. Definitely, definitely. It's, you know, very creative and very impactful and also very informative in, in you know, connecting us all together. So uh, I applaud the work that you do. You guys are doing great. Thank you so much, Jim. All right. And thank you so much for being here. I just want to say one more time, their website has some very good information, southasiancircleofhopkinton.org. So- yes. Definitely check it out. You can see the video there again, too, as well. It's also All on right, our just, Facebook. 
Sorry. Oh, there, of course, right? It's gonna be on, of course. All right. So uh, thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Same here. Bye. Bye-bye. And thank you for watching this episode of the Hangout Hour. Um, please tune in for more. We're talking all about Hawkington all the time. And uh, we will be bringing you more. Have a great rest of the day. Take care. Thank you.